Hi, in this video I have these UPSs. I've got a 6kVA over here, this is a 10kVA, I've got a little small one over here, I've got these battery banks, and the reason I'm doing this video is because many, many people have asked me, firstly, uh, is this good for load shedding? Are these little UPSs good for load shedding? Uh, do they, what is the purpose of the UPS? Can you put lithium batteries? Do the battery banks last? How come my backup time went from three hours now to 15 minutes? So I'm gonna answer each one of those questions one by one. Now, the first thing I'm going to bring to your attention is, yes, this is a RCT branded one, RCT Mesa. Now, I'm not specifically focusing on any brand. Actually, there are many, different face plates on the same unit all around the world so it's actually this type of UPS that I'm referring to so it doesn't matter whether it's RCT or Mesa and there's many other brands but in South Africa these are the main ones right so the first thing is what is this thing it's a UPS and this is called an online UPS and what makes it an online UPS is the fact that it's got double conversion which means that the electricity coming in is converted to DC so the electricity we have in South Africa is AC and that is converted into DC and then after the conversion it is then pulsed using an H bridge back into AC and then it is smooth and ready for your outputs that is why on the UPS you can actually adjust the output voltage which means that the incoming voltage might be 245 but on the UPS you can stabilize that and make it locked at 230 volts which is a great feature because if you live in an area where there's a lot of voltage fluctuations over voltage even under voltage that can damage sensitive appliances and electronics but with a UPS it stops that from happening another great thing about online UPSs is that they can also lock the frequency meaning that in South Africa our frequency is 50 Hertz if the frequency drifts below that or above that if it goes to 43 Hertz 45 Hertz or 55 Hertz that can be a problem for appliances as well now in South Africa ESCOM have to maintain the frequency at 50 Hertz so if you're worried about frequency drift it's not a big problem in South Africa because if in South Africa the frequency drifts the whole ESCOM grid will collapse so they have to lock the frequency at 50 Hertz but what happens when you use a generator now many people in South Africa and other countries rely on generators is for backup power and that's where we have the problem with the frequency so over here I have a common generator this is a petrol generator and when it gets loaded maybe you change the loading maybe you switch on a kettle whatever it is the voltage fluctuates and the frequency also drifts the same applies to this type of generator and this one has the same problem so I'm not knocking any specific brand I'm just telling you the status quo with these generators so over here I have these online UPS's one two three all of these have something in common and that is I can lock the frequency so if I use the generator to feed my appliances when I load up the generator the frequency might drift from 50 Hertz maybe down to 45 Hertz and that is a problem so if I show you on this UPS voltage coming in is 241 but look at the output it's 229 the UPS has converted that voltage and lowered it to 229 the frequency coming in from ESCOM is 50 Hertz but if I was feeding this from a generator you would see that frequency drift it will go 45 47 51 52 yet on the UPS I can lock it at 50 Hertz yes it does use more energy to do that but it does provide that feature nevertheless right so to answer the first question are these useful as UPS's in terms of cleaning the power making it stable reducing surges reducing faults on the output the answer is yes these are pretty rugged especially for the price and they're very good at cleaning the power surges and overcurrents and frequency deviations do not readily come through the output of any of these UPSs. So in terms of that feature, the double conversion, cleaning the power, these are great. Now let's talk about load shedding. Now every UPS has to have a backup system and this is where the problem comes in with all of these UPSs in that they rely on firstly lead acid batteries which does not give a good lifespan and number two, this particular type this one this one this one doesn't matter about the branding these particular models and the whole generation of these including the ones before which go by the name of galleon they all suffer from the same problem and that is the batteries are connected in series inside 
So here are examples of the batteries that are inside each one of those UPSs. They are 9 amp hour. These are specifically made for UPSs. They've got the wider terminals. Anyway, here they are. I've replaced many, many batteries and they're not cheap. And notice there's so many for one UPS. Now let's go look at the UPSs again. Right, starting with this little guy over here, this has got two batteries, 9 amp hours in series to provide an output of 24 volts, which is stepped up to make your 230 volts. This one over here is the 10 kVA, and this relies on 16 batteries connected in series in a battery bank. The battery bank looks like this. Sometimes they're bigger. I've got a couple that are bigger in size. It's just the way that the chassis is designed. Either it is tower mounted or rack mounted. So 16 batteries are inside each one of those banks. And you can see I've got one, two, three banks. And this one over here is the tower UPS. And it's got this battery box here and there are 16 inside there. So what is the problem? So the problem is that you buy the UPS and it normally has a very good backup time. For example, this UPS used to give nine hours of backup time with those three battery banks, including the battery bank that is built in. Nine hours. It now gives 45 seconds. And this is the reason. Number one, this is not designed for peak usage. This is not designed, even though it says 6 kVA, it's not designed to even give you 5,000 watts. It's actually just designed for a dip in the power. If there's a very short-term dip, then this is great. But for load shedding or outages, the more you allow this to feed your load for during load shedding, the faster these batteries are going to decline in terms of their lifespan. And I'll show you a little graph here. This is a common graph for the lifespan of a lead acid battery. This is the capacity, 100%, so that's a brand new battery. And this is the number of cycles. So there are 200 cycles, 400. And there it says a cycle service life in relation to depth of discharge. Notice that if you allow the battery to discharge below 60%, then you're only going to get 200 cycles, which is not even one year. And if you never allow it to decline or to discharge that much, you can get up to 1,200 cycles. The lead acid batteries are not designed for deep discharge. The other thing is, I showed that these batteries are connected in series. Now, just imagine, this is a 10 kVA UPS. Now, let's say the 10 kVA is running at a nominal current of 70%. So that means I'm loading this 10 kVA UPS only up to 70% of its maximum load. That means that I should expect a 30.7 amp current flowing in each one of those lead acid batteries. Now, because these batteries are connected in series, each battery has about 30 amps flowing through it if I'm running the UPS at 70% of its load. Now, if you ask me, this is not designed for 30 amp uh, continuous loading. Here's the data sheet for this particular battery. Notice that if I'm going to expect uh, around 30 amps to be discharged from this battery, I can only use it for six minutes. If I'm going to use it for longer periods of time, look at the last column where it says 90 minutes. The maximum I should expect from this UPS is 920 watts, but the UPS is rated at 10 kVA. So it's my experience that when these UPSs are loaded quite high, the battery life drops extensively and very quickly. If you buy this UPS and you only load it up to say one kilowatt and you hardly ever let the power go off, which is almost impossible in South Africa, then yes, you will get a fairly good battery life of maybe one and a half to two years. And that is in ideal situations where the power almost never goes off. However, if your power goes off even 20 times and the battery declines and the UPS shuts off, your battery life is going to decrease considerably. So to answer your question, are these good for load shedding? The answer is no. You're going to end up buying batteries after batteries after batteries, and the cost of the battery does not justify its use. However, if these are in a computer room, a server room, and the power goes off, you've got enough time to go to your servers and power them down, and then your UPS can shut down after 10 or 15 minutes. But these are not designed 
to run for hours and hours and hours while there is no power fed into them. But in their defense, I can say that if you want to use them to clean your power, for example, if you're living in an area where there's a lot of outages and you use this just to clean the power from the generator, if you're feeding your sensitive electronics with the generator, then these are great. So then I don't care about the battery life because I just care about the online double conversion feature of these UPSs and it, that it does very well. So to answer the question, are these good for load shedding? No. Are they good for cleaning the power? Yes. Do they give you good battery life? Yes, for a very short time. Then be prepared to have a very poor battery life at a very rapid rate, even if you nurse them. And I've had correspondence with the product manager of Rectron who said that the reason why these are decaying so much is because of load shedding. But I can say from experience that I've been using these since 2018 when we didn't have a lot of load shedding and the battery life also decayed. It's just the nature of the unit. So the load shedding just makes it a lot worse. Now the next thing is maybe you say, well, I'll buy this, but um, let me buy some extra battery banks. Now here are three battery banks and another design fault in my opinion is that these are connected in parallel, but guess what? There is no battery management system. So a fault in any one of these batteries actually decays the life of the other banks. So let's take for example, this is a brand new bank. The discharge rate is different to this battery bank over here, which is say maybe one year older. Now what we find is this bank is compensating for that bank because there's no battery management system. So I'm increasing the rate of aging in this bank because this bank is aged already. So what I'd have to do is always change the banks at the same time, which is a very costly encounter. The other thing is one fault in here, just one nine volt battery is gonna lower the voltage, causing additional stress on these two battery banks as it tries to compensate for the lower output voltage on this bank. So this design is an unmonitored, uncontrolled design, and it works great for the first maybe few months and then get ready for some major decline in battery life. So would I recommend buying battery banks? The answer is absolutely not. Maybe one, that is it. Right, so another question I have is what happens if you use a different lead acid battery technology? For example, this is just a regular lead acid, but this is a gel lead acid, which tends to be more rugged and is able to handle a little bit more deeper discharge. The answer is I have not found any significant changes in the battery life. I tried using the gel batteries and still I ran into the same problem of very poor battery life. Right, let me just give you an example of the costing. Each one of these to purchase them is about 6,000 Rand. So that's six, 12, 18,000. Then I've got the batteries inside here, and if I change that, that's three and a half thousand. So I'm already close to 20,000 Rand. Now the next question is, can you use lithium batteries for these battery banks? And the answer is no. According to the product manager at Rectron, he's advised me that you can't put lithium batteries in these UPSs. Now there are some plug and play lithium batteries in the market. For example, this one is a 12 volt, six amp hour battery. But there is a warning on the side here, which actually says not for UPSs. So you do that at your own risk if you're going to swap the lead acid batteries with lithium batteries. But according to the instructions I've received from the importer, we can't put lithium batteries in these UPSs. However, there might be a supplier in the market who has lithium batteries that can be used in place of lead acid. But as I stated, you'll have to contact the manufacturer to find out more information about that. There's a different battery management system with lead versus lithium. So if you're looking for a backup power solution, you might want to think twice about these type of products unless you're specifically looking for something that stops surges. One of the problems with load shedding is when the power comes back on, there's often a little surge that can easily destroy motherboards and computers. And a little UPS like this is extremely useful because when the power comes back on, it will only generate the output after it has converted the input to a clean output. So in that case, to protect your sensitive electronics, these are great. But as a backup power solution, they are not great. Right, so lastly, what about this guy over here? Now, this has become quite popular, and I've got a lot of questions about this. And the first question is, is this a UPS? The answer is no, this is not a UPS. This is an inverter. What that means is that when the input goes offline, this clicks over to the battery supply, meaning it selects the supply it wants. It's either running off the 
mains or it's running off the batteries. So that means there's a changeover and a changeover does result in a small disturbance to the electricity, to your output supply and I've got a video showing that small disturbance. So what about using this as a backup supply? Well, the only thing is this also uses a lead acid battery. So if you allow this to discharge significantly, then yes, this is also going to give you a short lifespan because it relies on the lead acid battery. However, this battery is a bit different to the batteries in these battery banks. This is a single unit, and while it's not this particular battery, it's this format of battery. And this format of battery is much more resilient at handling higher current discharges. So what that means is if you took these two units and on the output you connected a, an 800 watt microwave, say for example, now this one would fare better than this one because this one uses these type of batteries in series while this one is more resilient with higher discharge current. But you're still in the same boat in terms of the lifespan will reduce quite rapidly because of the technology of the battery and that being a lead acid battery. So the bottom line with lead acid batteries is don't let them discharge too much. Rather, use them for a short time and then power off your backup system so that you can have the longest lifespan of the battery possible. They're not tolerant of deep discharges because the lifespan reduces quite a lot after several deep discharges. So I'm about to loan this to a friend and I know for a fact that in six months they'll be saying to me, hey, how come the battery life is so low? When you loaned it to me, I was getting three hours and now I'm getting 15 minutes. I already know that's going to happen. So that's what you're in for when you go for these type of backup systems. Right, over here I have an offline UPS and the whole video was on the online UPSs. The online UPSs are the ones that clean the power. This UPS is an offline UPS and it only comes online when the power dips. The ESCOM power goes offline or there's load shedding or a power outage. So this particular unit does not offer any type of cleaning of the power. So what I've said about the online UPSs applies to only these ones. These unfortunately do not offer any refinement of the power. These simply just kick in place once the power has gone off. They act almost like an inverter. So this is not an online UPS and therefore all the things I said about online UPS does not apply here. So unfortunately these type of backup power supplies are not great for load shedding because of the nature of lead acid batteries. There's an example of the lead acid batteries in this battery bank. All of those lead acid batteries need to be replaced now. It's close to 4,000 Rand. It hasn't even lasted eight months. A better solution is to rather buy a dedicated lithium battery which works together with an inverter. This means that you'll have backup power during load shedding with a battery that is designed for at least 5,000 discharges. So if you compare 250 or 300 discharges to 5,000, you can see that it is worth it to get the lithium battery. I'm not promoting any brand, it's just that the technology of lithium is far superior than the lead acid batteries for deep discharges. So unfortunately, if you are gonna go the lead acid battery route just for backup power, then you are gonna be changing your lead acid batteries in a short time, especially if they have not had enough time to charge to their full capacity, and then load shedding or a power outage kicks in, and then it discharges when it wasn't even fully charged. All right, I hope that was helpful, and thanks for watching, and cheers.